Hello again, this is UML Operator. All right, in this episode, we are going to have the first video that kicks off a series on building an API architecture. Uh, we're gonna start, as I alluded to in the video leading up, kicking off the series. It is a RESTful API, and then later on, we may include the development of microservices or the transformation, I would like to say, to microservices and potentially the transformation to other data technologies. So we've got a lot to cover. Uh, try to keep each episode as short as possible and um, look forward to getting your feedback and questions on how you uh, approach delivering and developing software projects, whether you're using Sparks Enterprise Architect or some other tool. We'd like to know what tools you're using to deliver your systems and your software architecture. So to get started, we need to build a Sparks project for our project. So mm -hmm. to get started, I'm in the folder that I we're going to store this project. Uh, I've given it a name, uh, Arco, our fictitious company, KMS, which is Knowledge Management System Project. And I'm gonna leave it at that. We're gonna hit save, right? So now we have a blank project. I don't need uh, the cover page anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this, right? So again, we have a blank project. There is nothing in here. When I say nothing, it's only the factory default things that you see within your project delivery. So you have your, there's no patterns, you have the default templates, there are no custom templates that are in here so that we don't have any of that content we need to start our project. If we go to settings, uh, we only have the factory default uh, images. So all of these are factory default on every time I start up Sparks. On our UML types, which is most important to me, tag values, we don't have our tag values. So this is completely blank. The first thing we need to do in this blank project is to bring in a reference data. So we're gonna to go to settings, we're gonna to go to transfer, we're gonna to go to import reference data, and then we're going to select where we store our reference data. So this is where we store our project. What we want to do is go to the storage area where we keep our reference data. We're gonna choose the latest reference data file and we're gonna hit open. It has all the items that we need. We've got our automated scripts, our document templates, our images, and we have all the other tag values I was talking about is very important to me. So we're gonna select all of them. I'm gonna select the top one, hit shift, select all of these, hit import, and it's going to bring this reference data in and that fast it is done. And now we have our custom reports. We have our patterns, most important again to me are my tag values. So I have you know, people resources, all sorts of reference data that we need to start our project. I'm gonna reset my workspace layout to a common here and make sure I'm on browser and everything is ready to go. So we have a blank work area here over in the right in the browser. We have a root folder called model. We could certainly rename this root folder if we wanted to. I'm just going to leave it as model and I can always rename it later. And we're going to create a new sub package. Root, root nodes are at uh, level zero. We're gonna create a level one sub package and we're going to call it the project name and then dash. I want this one to be called release one because this is going to be the uh, Sparks project reference file. And it's starting out as local. We'll move it to a SQL server after we get everything set up for team involvement. And we're just gonna call it release one. So now we wanna build our folder structure under this sub package. Now the first package we're gonna create under this package here is going to be called main. Normally we have it called project management, but we met with a project management team and they want to keep a namespace or a folder for themselves. 
We're gonna create a diagram and you can create any diagram type you want. We're gonna use class in this case. And there we go. Now open it up. We have a blank main page that we're going to set as the landing page when users launch this project. So we're in a local environment. We're not gonna use personalized or personal, uh, but in local, we go to collaborate, model home, manage, set as default. So now every time this project loads, this is the first page that the I and the users will see. All right, therefore, the next package we're going to create is project management. So we're just going to simply call it project management. You can certainly follow your own naming conventions. And we're let's let's go without adding diagrams yet. We'll do this in a moment. Just all blank packages or namespaces. So again, we're going to go up to higher this level in the package structure, and we're going to add in another one. And that is going to be requirements management. Now the next package is for collaboration. And we're going to call this package, we could call it collaboration, but normally I just call it discussions, right? And let's go back up to this package here. We're going to create another package called solution approach or solution architecture however you want to state that. Package only, uh, no diagram, right? But once you get your requirements, what the problem is to solve, you need to solve the problem. So in the steps in which we often deliver systems and software, a solution approach comes after requirements development. Again, it's iterative, it's not waterfall. We, we wait for all the requirements to be done. You know, now it's time to do the other. It's iterative. That's why we also have the discussion folder up here is to discuss our project delivery as we're going forward. So let's go back up here. We're going to create a couple more packages. And that next one is going to be uh, design. And the next one after that is going to be testing, right? And again, these aren't in any particular order. Testing you do all of the time. If you want to change the name, you can hit F2. Maybe we want to call this test management. And Again, it's iterative, right? There's no order. It's just laying it out alphabetical, but we want to have some order to our package structure. So we're going to use this up arrow here to navigate or move up and down the elements. So we want main to be on the top, project management to be second, discussions to be third, solution approach to be fourth in order, requirements management, forgot to move that, that comes after project management. And let's see here, let's look at this. This is a fine order. Again, very easily to resort and sort your package namespaces the way that you want. Next, we're gonna add some diagrams to these packages. So we already did the main one, this blank diagram, which is a class you can tell by the toolbox, which is, for me, it's over on the left. But we don't have any diagrams underneath these. So we can go through very quickly and just add class diagrams to each one of these. And it, it takes the same name. You see this when it comes up of the package. So you have an opportunity to change the diagram name, but we're gonna take the same package name for each one of these diagrams as we're going through. All right, so we've got our uh, default diagrams in there, all class diagrams. Let's change this diagram requirements. So I'm on this diagram right now, and the requirements engineer has told us that they want to use the requirements toolbox. So how do you change that? You go to design, you see diagram, we go to options, change type, and then we have the ability to choose any of the diagram types that are available in your Sparks installation. In this case, we're using extended requirements, and now it, this is a requirements diagram type with the requirements tooling. All right, let's go back to the main landing page or diagram. We're gonna right click here and we're gonna close all except the main. So all of these are closed and we have this blank diagram area to work on. Now, because we brought in our reference data, if I go over to resources, uh, let me minimize document publishing, go down here to model patterns. I have a cover page that we built we can double click on it. We can preview our patterns ahead of time. 
that I, I want to bring in. So what we're going to do is right click on this and we're gonna use add. You could drag and drop it, but add pattern to diagram is gonna put it up in the upper left hand corner. So yes, I do. And here it comes. So this is bringing in the pattern that we developed, including the image for our cover page. And the only reason this image is showing up, if we go to settings and we go to image types, remember we brought in our images. If we didn't bring in our images or they weren't available, this cell would be blank and you'd have to do it manually. All right, so let's go ahead and give our cover page a subject title. And what I'm gonna do is take the name of this package, this package right here, Control A, Control C, bring it over here. There's a couple of ways you can edit this. You can use notes, for me is over in the lower right. Or if you double click the element, you can bring up the notes dialog. And we're going to call it the same name as the package that it is in. We can go ahead and size this like that, and there we go. I'm gonna collapse these packages by right-clicking on where I wanna start. If I go down to content right here, and then collapse branch, if I open this back up, everything is cleaned up and closed for us. Next, let's add some navigation to this project. So we already have the main diagram, which is going to be by default loaded when they load the project. But we wanna bring in these other diagrams for navigation so that users can get to the area they need to work on right from the main landing page. So there's a couple of ways to accomplish this. Let's go ahead and bring in project management diagram from the browser, hold down the left mouse button, just drag it and drop it in here and let go. You get to select the type. You can bring in as a diagram frame, a diagram reference, a hyperlink, a navigation cell, or a list. We want to bring it in as a navigation cell. But let me do a hyperlink first to show you how and why you might want to use this. Now remember, these pages or these elements within the pages, when you're doing web reports, these are actually, this is your landing page for your project. And users can come in here and select these to get to particular content on your website that you want to get to. But in this case, when you come into this, you'll see over in notes, or you could right click here, go to properties, and get to notes this way. You can put in some content in here. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. That shows up as a link. And then you can come into layout and you can size this. Let's just go 12 for the heck of it. Size it any way you want. And you can remove this icon if you want to. If you go to properties again, open this up. You can hide this icon. You can create an alias, which we're not going to do. So, so you can make the, your landing page look like a web page that folks can navigate to particular things they want to get to. So then click it and go right to project management page. But I prefer to use navigation cells. So I'm going to drag this in here again. I'm going to use navigation cell this time. And I can choose an icon or I can escape out of this and choose that icon later, right? But for right now, we're gonna choose an icon for project management that looks something like this. And then what we can do, if we go over to notes here, we can, you know, say something about what this cell is so that if when users select it, it shows up within notes or when they mouse over it, if you have that feature, it will show up there. If we go to properties, you're able to again edit the content under this diagram hyperlink properties, which is a navigation cell. So different ways to approach it, leave it up to you. Let's go ahead and bring in the next one. So requirements, just drag and drop as a navigation cell. We're not gonna choose an icon right now. We're just gonna escape out and just have a blank navigation cell. And th then we're gonna do this for discussions, again, drop it in. Don't worry about where it is, just drag and drop it anywhere you want uh, for the most part, hit escape, and we're gonna clean this up and organize them in just a moment. 
All right, we have them in. I'm gonna go this order, just kind of drag them around and set them like this. Then what we can do in layout is we can come up to diagram layout and we can select neaten, which just basically squ should square things up. Now it didn't work, why didn't it? Because I didn't select what I wanted to lay out. Let's do it again, and there we go. It's still not really laid out the way that I want, but it squared some things out. I could select everything this way and space them evenly apart, again, using layout tools, something like that. And then if when you're ready to come back and put in some sort of icon, if you want to, you just right click on the item, you go to appearance, select navigation image, you get this dialog back up again. We're just gonna choose something simple and you can add icons if you wish. All right, let's go ahead and test what we've done. We're gonna bring back up the start page. From the start page, we're gonna launch our project and there it goes. It lands on the main cover page just like we wanted and it's laid out to get us started and users are able to very quickly get to where they want to go. Again, if you understand navigation cells, when you click on these, that it will show you anything that is underneath them. And right now they're all completely blank. Now, before we wrap up, there's something very important you have to do. Do this anytime during the delivery lifecycle or what have you, but we need to hit Control, Alt, and B, bring up baseline. And then from here, we're going to create a new baseline at this package level, it says what package you appear on. So we're gonna hit new baseline. It is 0 0.01. Again, you could use the default that's in here, or you could simply type initial project start baseline or something like that, right? Include all sub packages because we want everything underneath this package and hit okay, right? That's done. And if you wanted to, you could baseline at any level. And we'll talk more about this as we proceed in the project. All right, that concludes this episode. Thanks again so much for watching. We're going to have a blast in this series and look forward to it. In our next episode, we're going to get into requirements management. We may touch on the discussions folder, but I want to focus on requirements management. I want to focus on solution approach and then get us into design as quickly as possible. So discussions, test management, and project management are all the things that are going to happen in between. So until the next episode, happy modeling.